morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, this worship service will be repeated in the 1030 service outdoors. Uh, some of the worship service is geared towards the children of our school uh, and the Christian school, and that also is true of the sermon today, which is a combination of both Pentecost, coming of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit in the lives of our children. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly the sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my spirits, uh, servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.
God invites us to come into his presence to worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed his transgressions from us. many different images in the scriptures to help us understand the powerful work of the Holy Spirit who can bring things that are dead to life again. One of the more powerful images are the vision that was given to the prophet Ezekiel of a valley of dry bones and he preaches to these dry bones and they become alive. Picture of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as well. I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And this is what the sovereign Lord said to those bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come and, you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked in tendons, and then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the Lord says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. 
I will bring you back to the land. A flesh appeared on them and skin covered them and there was no breath in them. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will pour my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. We introduce the gospel with the gospel acclamation. <clears throat> John 15, 26 to 27. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Lord Jesus, we ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit on the words proclaimed and heard in your saving name. Amen. So I'd like to have you think that you're sitting outside at 10.30 this morning. Uh, hopefully the sun will come out a little bit. And uh, you're part of the school program here and the many parents that have come to visit and the children that will be singing during that service. And the message we prepared on the work of the Holy Spirit has been directed also to the children of the school and the teachers of the school as well. To begin then, some amazing miracles have taken place at Carlsbad Christian Academy this past year. For every day the teachers were with the students of the school, they were bringing them God's word. And when God's word was brought into the lives of the children, miracles occurred as the Holy Spirit brought them closer and closer to Jesus, their Savior. What a blessing this school has been for the children who have come here. They have certainly learned their math skills and reading skills. They've been able to put together sentences and perhaps even write stories. They learned art and also music. And the teachers, because it's a Christian school, were also able to motivate the children to learn to respect and love each other out of a love for Christ. But now let's take a moment to reflect on the real larger blessings that come in a school when it's a Christian school that can teach children the Word of God. For the teachers are able to tell the children how the world began and came into existence. In a Christian school, they can tell them that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They can talk about how God created the sun and the moon and the stars. And do you know what happens if suddenly there's a break in the May gray and the sun begins to shine. Here is this star, the only star in the solar system, 93 million miles away. And somehow it can bring warmth and life to this earth in which we live. And the world turns around our earth in uh, 24 hours a complete revolution so that it doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold, it's just right. See, what's Goldilocks, right? Okay. Amazing God that designs the world in which we live. And what a joy it is for teachers when they can teach the truths of God's word to our children and teach them about God's creation. For example, 
I have here a feather. And it's a flight feather. And if you look at the feather closely, you'll see, first of all, it's very light, but very strong. These things connect, come apart, and they connect back together. They snap back together with little pieces almost like Velcro. And notice the curvature. That's a feather that was designed by God for the purpose of flight. And did you know that McCulloch's book brings this out, that when the Wright brothers were developing the airplane at Kitty Hawk, they spent weeks walking up and down the beach observing the sea seagulls. And we were just recently in Washington, D.C. and saw the Wright brothers' first plane. And you can definitely see that curvature designed by them based on God's design in the birds of the air. A Christian school can teach that to children. It can teach how God created a perfect world. But then with sadness, teach that this perfect world and perfect people, that perfect world was lost when Adam and Eve fell into sin. And how they pass that sin down to their children and down to all the generations till this day today. And so they learn the sadness that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But at the same time, the children are privileged to learn, even at an early age, what God did by sending his son into the world for us. And I'm thinking perhaps even by third and fourth grade, some of them have memorized this verse that you can say with me this morning. Jesus' words, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Last December, at the Christmas season, there was artwork on the walls, the music was being sung about Jesus' birth. Children were being taught that Jesus came into this world as God's Son, born as a baby in Bethlehem. When Easter came, the children heard how Jesus gave his life on the cross for all of our sins and then rose from the dead. And how he told his disciples he would come back and take them to himself, and that he prepares a place for us. And this place Jesus prepares for us is far more real than anything we experience in this life. In fact, if you were to take all the best moments of your life and reduce them down to one minute of pure joy, it would not even begin to compare to the joy that's waiting for you in heaven forever and ever and ever. But now we're going to go back and focus again on the Holy Spirit's work on Pentecost and also the lives of your life and the lives of the children. Reading the text again, when the counselor comes, Jesus said, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit is going to testify and point to him. And what does Jesus do, the Holy Spirit do? He testifies to us that Jesus Christ is our Lord and God. When Jesus appeared to his disciples, Thomas wasn't there. And they told him, we've seen the Lord. And doubting Thomas said, I won't see unless I can put my finger into his hands and put my hand into his side. Jesus appeared to him and said, Thomas, put your finger there. Put your hand in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And what did Thomas say? Remember those words? My Lord and my God. Thus the Holy Spirit also leads you to confess Jesus. My Lord and my God. Corinthians tells us that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He calls the Spirit here the Spirit of truth. And in school, children will learn that telling a lie is something wrong, that it is sinful. But they will also learn about the father of lies who's called the devil. Of course, the devil knows how to get to people, adults and children. When someone hurts you, what does the devil say to you? Get back at them and hurt them back again. And when the devil, when you find yourself very ashamed of something you've done wrong, troubled by your sin, the devil will say to you, the liar of lies, that God will never forgive a person like you. 
But then the Holy Spirit comes to you. The wonderful Holy Spirit witnesses that Jesus testifies that Jesus points to the nail marks in his hands as the assurance and peace that you have with God through Jesus and reminds you that you're a child of your Heavenly Father. Oh, so often the Holy Spirit keeps telling you again and again, you're a dear child of your Father in Heaven. Listen to what Paul said in Romans chapter 8. He said, Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Then Paul goes on to say, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. You can't even begin to fathom how many times the Holy Spirit reminds you that you are a child of God. If you could wear a special band, a fit-type band on your wrist, or carry a program in your iPhone that tells you how many times the Holy Spirit reminds you that you're a child of your Heavenly Father, you would be astounded and amazed for the children in that service coming up. We're going to remind them as summer comes and they play at the beach and that they get up in the morning for breakfast or when they fall asleep at night, it's the Holy Spirit who's going to keep reminding them that they're dear children of a Heavenly Father. There's a story about a college student who, after her first year of college, came home for the Christmas break. And she was going through a really rough patch in her life. She went to her room, which is exactly the way she left it in the fall. And then she looked on the shelf and she saw a little box, three by five type box, with index cards in it. And she had gone to a Christian school and on the outside of the box, it says, My Promise Box, and it was nicely decorated. Over the year, the students had all put their promises from the Bible. The teacher helped them find them. They put them one by one and put labels on top of each promise. She sat down her bed and opened up the Promise Box, but as she opened it up, it fell out of her hand. Promises were scattered all over her bed, all over the floor, and she smiled to herself as she thought, how amazing it is, all these promises are mine. And she started reading them. You see, the Holy Spirit can do that, can't he? He has the power to remind you of all God's promises again and again, sometimes just even in the back of your mind. True story. Kevin was 10 years old. There was something wrong with his brain. Local doctors couldn't do anything to find out what was wrong. So they sent Kevin and his family down to the UCLA Medical Center. And on their way down to the medical center, they decided to eat something and, of course, went to Kevin's favorite place, which was In-Out Burger. And as they finished their meal, Kevin said to his parents, we don't have to worry. Flip the cup over, and underneath it says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. His mother could not tell this story without getting tears in her eyes. And there are so many different ways the Holy Spirit can remind you of God's promises, remind you a dear child of your Heavenly Father through Jesus. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But notice Jesus said not only will the Holy Spirit testify to us about Jesus, but the Holy Spirit will help us testify to other people about Jesus as well. Before ascending up into heaven, Jesus said, For you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So what does the Holy Spirit do in Christian families? He fills the parents with the ability to be able to witness to their children. And he allows children to be able to witness to their parents. And that's an ongoing thing that happens in a blessing of a Christian home. Carlsbad Christian Academy has chosen for its theme this year, Rejoice in the Lord Always. Always? Why didn't they change that? Why didn't they just have Rejoice in the Lord and not Rejoice in the Lord Always? That's an impossible task, is it not? But that's what Paul says in Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. And here's where the Holy Spirit steps in. 
Because in the lowest moments of your life, the Holy Spirit will remind you of God's promises, remind you of Jesus, your Savior, and bring joy back into your life. Apparently, the students must have done this artwork because out in the bulletin board is this picture now blown up. And maybe you can see it from where you're sitting. Rejoice in the Lord always, it says. Here is the darkness right here. Here is the light over here. And what do you see right here but the cross of Jesus, our Savior? And then it's interesting, the person who did this has all these musical notes all over. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Orphan Annie when she said, sun will come out tomorrow, tomorrow, the sun will come out tomorrow. We can sing as Christians every day, whatever may happen in our lives, the sun is here today. Not S-U-N, but S-O-N. God's son is here, and that joy is ours constantly. So we're going to ask the children if they've made any good friends this past year. One of the blessings of being able to go to a school is that you do develop friendships with people. And sometimes those friendships last a lifetime. Adults here, you can think back to even some of the friends you developed and how special those friends were to you. Well, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were good friends. And one day, Winnie uh, Piglet came up from behind Pooh, snuck up close to Pooh and said to him, Pooh, he whispered, yes, Piglet, what do you want? Piglet said, nothing. And then held on to Pooh, Pooh's hand and said, Paw, I just wanted to know that you're there. That's what a good friend does. He's always there for you. No one will ever be a better friend to you than Jesus. Jesus, the night before he died, told his disciples, you're my friends. And he even told them, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And that friend will stand by your side and be with you no matter what comes to you in your life. What a wonderful blessing the Holy Spirit has been for all of us, and especially the children of our school. Amen. We now join in singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Please stand. O Lord Jesus, our ascended King, we thank you for keeping your promise to send us the Holy Spirit. O Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us to believe in Jesus, our Savior, and confess him as our Lord and God. We thank you for reaching into the hearts of our children to bring them ever closer to their Savior. O Heavenly Father, as another school year comes to a close, we thank you for your word that has been taught to our children. You have given them your promises that will never fail. You will send the Holy Spirit to remind them that they are your dear children so they can rejoice in you always. Gracious Lord God, you created the world. You made it possible for people to live together in families. Bless our moms and dads as they raise their children to be your children. And bless our children as they find joy in obeying their parents and treating them with love and respect. Make homes places where your word is heard and your praises are sung. We ask this in Jesus' name and join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day kept his promise and poured out the Holy Spirit to empower his church to proclaim the gospel in all the world. And therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of heavenly host, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We take away the sin of the world. Have mercy, God. for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith. 
faith. Depart in peace. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting, and depart in peace. Amen. Take and drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Reminders about Bible class, uh, immediately, not immediately, but what is it, 9.20 it's, or sometime Bible class starts here in the sanctuary, uh, and we will be going through something called Great Chapters of the Bible. Uh, when we'll look at Psalm 139 today. Uh, next week we'll look at John 17. I've also been asked to announce that there will be no uh, Bible, uh, midweek Bible study on Romans this week but I believe it resumes the following week, I, I, according to your bulletin, so keep that in mind as well. And I know as uh, maybe the president of the congregation wants to say th something about the call meeting, but let me encourage you that if you personally don't attend the call meeting, uh, there's tremendous power in prayer. Uh, keep the congregation in your prayers, keep your president of your congregation in your prayers, 
and ask that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide the people to find that person that the Lord wants to serve here in this wonderful congregation. Mr. President, any comment you want to make? Okay. No, it's just respectful, except that the time is usually about 6 o'clock, and we're doing it at 7.15. So uh, if you show up at 6.15, we'll be there. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.